had a bad week. Good evening, my lovelies. I must say, you all look good enough to eat. <laughs> it is I, uh, your lord and vampire savior, Love Game. And you know what? I like, I like playing as this character quite a bit. More than I thought I would. This is Bishamon, our resident, uh, well, extra spooky samurai man. He's got quite a good backstory to him. I didn't know I liked playing as him that much, because I didn't use him very much back in the day, but, uh... His playstyle is super fun, because you have that ability where he throws his sword, and, like, you can actually do another input after that to, like, either do that back-to-back -back slash or pull pull the enemy towards you. It's There's a lot of good options you can do there, so he's fun from a gameplay standpoint. <sighs> but, yeah, we are getting... Pretty close to the end. We only have two more regular characters and then the boss characters uh, left to go, so... Obviously the final video will go up on Halloween. This one will be going up on the 30th, but then again so will the one after it, so... Yay for more vids, I suppose. For some reason he doesn't have that special in Vampire Savior, I don't know why that is. But, uh, who is Bishamon? Well... He was a true and honest samurai who, one day the guy was um, shopping in the antique shop. You know, he had to listen to some, uh, listen to that Macklemore telling him to go buy a skeet blanket or whatever, and he couldn't find one of those, but what he did find was a nice set of antique armor, and uh, he decided to pass on it. He was like, nah, they don't get me no money on the uh, Antiques Roadshow. But he awoke in his house a few hours later, with the armor there with him, with no memory of how he actually got it. I guess the impulse just took him over, you know. Impulse buying and all that stuff. So what was the big guy to do? Well, he just sat there staring at it because it was such a compelling piece of, uh, craftsmanship. And obviously it had a very creepy aura to it, because the truth was it was made from the body of a an actual demon from Makai, and so was the sword, actually. The sword was called Kien, I think. The armor and the sword both have, like, a name, and they're their own entities. Obviously, they have a fucking face, so... If you can figure that out, well... Can't help you. But, the armor kind of made him go on a rampage and... potentially attack his wife, although thankfully she did survive. But he tried to, like, struggle to control himself in the armor because it was taking over his soul and all that, and so... Most of the fights here is just kind of him going on a rampage with the armor, influencing his actions, but... Yeah, that move right there is a lot of fun to pull off. It's even better in uh, Vampire Savior, actually. This guy isn't too different between incarnations of uh, Hunter and Savior. But, kind of, the way that move looks is different, because here he throws his sword. But in Vampire Savior, he actually, like, those two little spirits next to him will, like, hold the other character down for a while so he can just do the attack that way. But the effect of the attack is almost the same thing. I'm not sure, like, what was going on with his body design here, how, like, the face is, like, kinda inhuman looking, because he has a human face, as you'll see. When we complete the game here. Yeah, he was a ton of fun to play as, uh... I can see the, uh, appeal in maining him, for sure. I think he's kind of a mid-tier. Which would make sense. All I know is the top tiers are... QB, John Talbain, Lord Raptor, and Sasquatch. There we go. Really enough Sasquatch. You wouldn't think a heavy character would be that way, but he has a lot of broken stuff about him. He can be kind of annoying to face sometimes. Like Morgan here. I really hate fighting Morgan in Vampire Hunter. It's like they made her better than she actually is in, uh... Any other game, really? Well, she was quite good in Marvel 3 as well, though. I think out of the characters I did main, 
Morgan was like the most top tier. Because my main team in that game was Morgan, Iron Man, and Zero. Well, Zero was pretty top tier too, so. But either way, yeah, we're getting pretty close to the end here. Just chilling with this, uh, I like that animation there as well, just like, how the sprite is different from him. It's like these ghostly, I think it's implied to be either the previous owners of the armor, because that was in the lore, like, that armor did have other people that wore it in history. And also, it could be a reference to the fact that a katana... The best katana is called a five-body blade, because, like, supposedly it can cut through five bodies. I don't know if that's just, like, ancient weeb shit, or if it's the real deal. <laughs> I'm not sure why Pyron is so much easier than Weedsol, because, like, obviously you've heard me rant endlessly about how fucking much I hate Weedsol. With his frame one grab and his full screen low. But yeah, as you can see, there's a special animation there because for some reason, defeating Pyron lifts the curse from Bishamon's body. I can see what he actually looks like. He has a fun little uh, story arc in the OVA as well, which kind of is more or less this, but more detailed. As you can see, thankfully, his wife did not perish from the rampage he went on. And as you can see, he truly does care about redeeming himself, even if what he doesn't, what he did, wasn't really his fault. Ultimately. All these landscapes always remind me of, like, Samurai 7. But that was the end of his Vampire Hunter, or Night Warriors playthrough. Again, the, I, I, the naming sequence for these games is so fucking weird, just because... The first game was either Darkstalkers the Night Warriors, or... Vampire the Night Warriors. By the way, that dog was originally just like a background element in one of the stages, but it kind of later became his actual companion, which is kind of cool. <laughs> but yeah, the naming scheme is fucking hard to uh, keep track of, which is why I keep on calling them interchangeably their Japanese and American names. Now here's something that's unique about Bishamon's character. The one that we're playing as right now is implied to not even be the same person as the actual Bishamon. This is just the armor that has taken form without a, the need for a body, just because of its like bloodthirst. So right now, the real Bishamon is after this, uh, is like going after this body to try to stop him. By the way, there's BB Hood's, uh, one of her supers, anyway. <laughs> I also love that super, by the way. I don't know if that one was new for this game, or if it was in, uh, Vampire Hunter as well, but... Tons of fun. Um... I'm not sure if that's a pursuit attack, or if that's just one of the, al the alternate attacks you can do with, uh... These, like, spirit possession thingy. Speaking of which, there's another thing you can do in this game that I'll show off. But yeah, it's kind of cool to know that you're not really playing as the real Bishamon, you're just playing as, like, the armor that's created its own body. Which I guess is a good way to <clears throat> explain away why he would be fighting again despite vowing not to wear the armor again, so... Good on ya, Capcom, for that one. And now there is something cool about him as well, uh... And I figured this out by myself back when I was playing the game on PSP. You can put in a cheat code. I think there's, there's like a legitimate way to unlock it as well, but you can put in a cheat code which will allow you to play as a, kind of a palette swap of this character called Oboro. 
which is literally Bishamon if he was able to fully control the armor without the bloodthirsty tendencies. Like he has like special sprites and everything for it, which is pretty cool. And it has like a different color as well. As I said, palette swap. I think the move set is more or less the same, but it is awesome that he can like actually wear and control the armor. <laughs> what the fuck is that animation? Yeah, unfortunately, Lilith doesn't even have her like her own uh, theme music in this game because it was shared with uh, of all people, BB Hood for some reason. I don't know why that was, but there you have it. So the real Bishamon actually managed to like meditate and like become one with his spirit, you know, open his third eye and all that. He did it so good. He was able to, like, see into the Majigan without even being lured there by Judd. Unless that was his plan the entire time, I don't know. Maybe that was, like, a multi-layered 4D chess he was playing with our boy here, so... Maybe. Maybe that happened. Yeah, he's a very fast and loose, fun character to play, so... If you want... If you ever did want to play this game on, like, Fightcade or whatever, I would suggest picking this guy up as kind of a starter main to get things going. I would say he's more straightforward than Morgan is, because Morgan has all those weird supers that need, like, strange inputs, like the Cryptic Needle. I never even showed off the one where she actually fucks the enemy to death. That was unfortunate. I forgot what the input was for that. Could be for, uh, again, a bonus video at some point, but... Speaking of, uh, fun supers... Something funny happened in this battle that I have to show off. Coming up in a few seconds, actually. This is Dimitri's Midnight Bliss move that I could not properly do in the playthrough. <laughs> and there is Girl Bishamon, the best waifu. Yeah, if you are playing as a male character, it transforms you into like a gender-swapped version. The results with the female characters are very all over the place. Like, Lilith's is just her in pajamas, as far as I can tell. And for some reason, Morgan turns into, like, this creepy-looking chibi doll of herself. I don't understand that decision at all. <laughs> and there it is again. The one time I want to actually use Dark Force, he says, No, fuck you, I have to show that move off. <laughs> I hate fighting Dimitri, he's such a good zoner. Yeah, this has definitely been a fun, again, a fun Halloween-style project. Just for something a little different. For some reason, that doesn't count as an ES special finish, because you're just... I guess you're still doing the same input as you would be for the actual, like, follow-through. Even though the... The stun move is clearly different. It's clearly the ES version of it, so... Not sure what to make of that. One thing I liked about older games like this that had a scoring system was they actually showed you... Like, they rewarded you in some way for doing better stuff than just, like, spamming. So it kind of taught you how to actually, like, utilize special moves more so than just kind of, like, mashing out normals. Yeah, that pursuit attack fucking sucks. <laughs> I think I hit him with it one time when I was fighting, uh, Lilith. <laughs> You know what's funny is I was, uh, I was just thinking about this, like, knock on wood here, but how hilarious would it be if this game actually got some kind of revival after I made this series? Because if y'all recall, right after I made the Zoids Legacy LP, like a month later, it was revealed that, um, Zoids Wild came out, and I guess, there's his, uh, finisher, by the way. Really fucking cool. That one is quite fun to pull off, and his inputs aren't very hard either, so if you don't want to have to do, like, bizarre inputs all the time, then he's your guy for that, but... 
Yeah, they announced, like, Zoids Wild and then Zoids Wild uh, Zero the second season. Or, well, series. I kind of wish I had, like, a ability to jinx things like that. It's like, kind of a reverse jinx, really, but... Like I said, a lot of new Darkstalkers videos coming out for this Halloween, so I'm proud to be part of that uh, little mini wave of popularity there. I know I said little mini, it's kind of a redundancy there. There's a level in Blaze Blue that reminds me of this one, but I can't think of what it's actually called. I could never quite beat Jetto on the first try because his uh, his super is so fucking good. Like he's he's not the best character in the game. He's only like a mid, maybe even a mid low tier, but he definitely fights like a fighting game boss character in that sense. As you can see, he's just reading my fucking inputs right here. <laughs> I fucked that one up. I had him. <laughs> Yeah, I hate the hitbox on those, like, on both of his supers. It's obnoxious as all hell. That move is also quite infamous, the grab that, uh, pumps you with blood, because depending on what character you're playing is, it, uh, pumps a different part of you with blood, let's just say. And yes, for Lilith, it is the boobs, so... If we're counting QB, then yeah, she can get her boobs and butt pumped up as much as she likes in this game for all you, uh, DeviantArt fans out there that <laughs> love that for some reason. I'm sure that, like, that move spawned, like, more people that were into that over time. <laughs> and a nice finisher right there with the, uh, the punishment blocks, as I call them. Because that was Mio's punishment in, uh, Keijo. Anyhow, we finally caught up with our rogue armor. The wrong trousers, you know, like uh, Wallace and Gromit. I wonder if that was like in any way lip sync to the Japanese dialogue, or if it's just like a repeating animation. Probably just a repeating animation, honestly. But he's like, nah, homie. Can't be having none of that. I don't know if the cheat code to get Bishamon or get Oboro works in the PS Now or PS3 version of the game. Never actually tried. But yeah, we have the proper path of redemption for our boy Bishamon here, and as far as we know, that's his uh, canon ending, even though it's kind of ominous with what could potentially happen, but... Uh, Enough of me having fun, we get to suffer now. I fucking hate playing this Rakuo. Okay, so Rakuo is the merman from the uh, sea underneath the Amazon. He was once the emperor of a proud race of fishmen who got all fucked up by Pyron when he came to Earth, and he was the last survivor. Obviously, he has control over sea creatures and water and all that good stuff. He's like Aquaman, except he doesn't quite suck as much, except I suck with him for sure, because I hate playing as him. I thought he was going to be easy to play as. He seems like someone who's straightforward at first, but like his moves are really weird to like properly get, properly execute and like use in a real match, quote-unquote. The big wave of water is pretty fun, but I mean, that's, that's just one super, like... I guess when you trap him in a bubble like that, you're supposed to, like, follow up with some kind of combo, but fuck me if I can do that with a character that's not even my main in this game, so... I do enjoy how his, like, dashing move is him swimming. <laughs> that's kind of cool. But again, very typical of these kind of characters in Darkstalkers, he has... That uncanny ability to stretch his body into all sorts of shapes and sea creatures in this case. It kind of sucks I never actually used Dark Force in this campaign whatsoever, except for the one time that I fucked it up against Dimitri. <laughs> yeah, the, the waves are always satisfying to actually land properly whenever you can actually do that, but it is what it is. I guess the orange... 
look for him is kind of cool. It's like a clownfish Finding Nemo type shit. And the claw move is pretty cool too. Again, he's fun to like watch in action. I'm sure there's some good players with him, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't get copyright claimed last episode, because I did use uh, the instrumental to Eminem's ass like that. Because it sounded like vaguely Arabic or Egyptian. But I guess I was talking loudly enough over it that it didn't really affect anything. But yeah, if you want to look online, there's actually a full-on, um, <laughs> excuse me. There is a full-on, like, montage of all the different Midnight Bliss versions for Dimitri. And what's cool about it is in Capcom vs. SNK, it even has like special sprites for all the SNK characters as well, so... They put a lot of work into that one move, it's crazy. I always theorize that's why he, despite being the other main character that's not Morgan, was, um... was in Marvel... or was not in Marvel or any of those other games. Any of those, uh crossovers and spin-offs was that doing Midnight Bliss, especially for 3D models, would be so much fucking time. That would take forever. And then again, they could just remove it, like they removed the fucking Eraser Cannon from Morgan's moveset in Marvel 3. Totally not upset over that or anything. Because <laughs> finishing Shower was not very good in that game, unless you were to combo into it through an air combo. So it was kind of situational, if you ask me. Morgan's supers were just not very good, in, in my opinion, in uh, Marvel 3, because you had to either, like, use them as reads or cancel into them, so I'll just save my super meter for, like, Iron Man or some shit, because this super is just a straightforward, uh, big ol' fuck-off proton cannon. How can you go wrong with that? And Zeroes is pretty good as well, so... But yeah, that's always been my theory as to why Dimitri, despite being, like, one of the main characters, has not really been in the other crossover games besides that one. That, well, I say that one, because he was in... Capcom vs. SNK and Capcom Fighting Evolution, I think? I had Capcom Fighting Evolution for a short time, and it's not a very good game, it's just kind of like... A whole bunch of characters copy-pasted from their original games with, like, no changes, and, like, kind of bare-bones. Now, oh. I had so much trouble against Tweetzel with Rukuo, I cannot play him for shit. But yeah, obviously based on the creature from the Black Lagoon, more anime, very handsome. There's a whole meme about him because of the American cartoon where they go, like, uh, you're curiously attractive for a fish man. I think he was also voiced by Ian Corlett. Or was it, um... Scott McNeil, I can't remember. One of the Beast Wars actors. Uh, but yeah, Rakuo, in Japan, he is known as... I don't know if it's Alubath or Albath? Don't know what the hell that means. But... His American name is a reference to Rico Browning, who was the actor for a creature from the Black Lagoon. Or whatever the hell is the actual monster's name was. So again, little nod there, it's always fun. So his fight against Pyron is a much more straightforward uh, quest for revenge. Just because he wants to... You know, obviously his race got all fucked up, so... What else can you do? when that happens. I hate that poison move, I can never land it properly. Yeah, I've seen some good players of him, and he is like a menace in the right hands, but... Again, those hands are not mine by any uh, means. <laughs> And he meets the fish waifu, and everything's okay from that point onward. I mean, how else could you recreate your race other than to 
find yourself a nice fish wife. I'm sure there's all kinds of artwork of her as well, just because... Why wouldn't there be at this point? Her baby is even like a little tadpole thing, that's, that's fucking adorable. <laughs> and yet another awesome, lovely sprite of our fish man. For some reason, he has that frog on his shoulder. It's like the version of him that's whenever you use uh, an Acarus is special. <laughs> nice little nod there. I do know that, like, his design was based on, like, someone who could be the main character if you wanted him to be, if that makes any sense. Now, about him in this game. Playing both versions of the characters is a great way to throw your ass off, because in Night Warriors, all of his, proje well, pseudo-projectiles, his little, um... Poison Cloud and his uh, Sonar or Sonic Ray, whatever the hell. Those were quarter circles. Guess what they are in this game? Charge moves. Yeah, I don't get it either. I could not figure it out for a whole minute there. I was like, what am I doing wrong? I had to just, like stop the video to um, look at the move list. <laughs> They're not very good charge moves either because they don't have a lot of range to them, so you have to, like, be close to someone but also be charging, so it's kind of a counterintuitive. I, I don't like him in this game whatsoever. I didn't like him a lot in, uh, Night Warriors either, but especially in this game when he's, like, a short range charge character. Like, what kind of sense does that make? Because you have, you know, Kagura who's kind of the Guile archetype, where he has a projectile for his horizontal charge, and then a quote-unquote flash kick with a sword for his vertical charge. So that makes a lot more sense, but like a short-range projectile being a charge move is just not right to me at all. So again, keeping in line with the theme of Jedi luring in all the different Darkstalkers into the Majigan through what they desire or want, well, that's kind of redundant. Point being, he senses that his son, whose name, by the way, is Ricky, he senses that Ricky is in the Majigan, and so he seeks out Jedi, obviously, for that reason. But kind of like QB, even though he had two games, well, three games, because he was in all three games, uh, his story is not super prevalent to anything. He's just kind of like this guy trying to fight for his race and rebuild his lost uh, kingdom. It is totally not Atlantis or anything, just a lost kingdom. His design is cool, I just... Again, I can't play him worth a shit. I don't like short-range uh, charge characters at all. It always... It, it, ugh, it is always fun to use the bubble to finish him off like that. Just kind of almost a disrespectful move in that sense. <laughs> he is having a lot of fun in his uh, victory screen there, though. How can you blame him? He's just a carefree merman. Beautifully handsome and just having all the fun in the world. Yeah, funny enough, despite this stage being a little bit bigger, I think, than uh, the other ones anyway, I don't think it's banned competitively. I think the only one that's banned is uh, the Fetus of God, because it's like really fucking... It's way bigger than the other stages, so like getting someone into a corner is damn near impossible. Or unlikely, I should say. As you can see, the characters that have Jetta as a 
regular boss usually aren't the most story relevant, but there's some exceptions, obviously, but Jedi is kind of just your de facto go-to boss. Whereas, like, Morgan had Lilith, John had Dark Talbane. Didn't someone else have a unique boss as well? I feel like they did. But yeah, he's definitely a tough one. I would say he's much harder than uh, Pyron. <sighs> Either way you look at it, the voice of his son guided him back into the sea. As you can see, our boy Ricky here has made a new friend. Whose name happens to rhyme with his. <laughs> and this new race that she is a part of is like... Implied to not be the exact same race... As, uh, as Rakuo himself is. But more of like an offshoot. I guess it's like an example of uh, Allopatric Speciation or something like that. Speci speciation, weird word to say there. 